Ever since Apple announced the iPhone 14 and indicated that it will not have a SIM card tray, tech YouTubers have been going out of their minds giving you all their reasons as to why that was a bad decision. Since I don't think that it was a bad decision in this video, I'm going to defend, yes, I'm going to become the Apple sheep and defend why I think Consumer-wise, this was the right decision for Apple. Let's get to it. Okay, let's start off indicating that I don't disagree with everything that they think. I do think that the only point, valid point that they have is the one that if your SIM card gets damaged, it's easier for them just to replace the SIM card, give you a new one, and then you can just go back uh, to your normal life. Instead of if the eSIM gets damaged, that probably means that they're gonna have to replace your phone, which means the phone has to be in stock, etc., etc., etc. That is the only valid point that I can see with this. Everything else, I completely disagree. Starting with the fact that when you buy the phone, I cannot say all of them because I don't know all of them, but most of the phone companies give you your phone and your number, once you transfer everything, your number is not on the eSIM. It's on the SIM card tray. If you open the SIM card tray, there's a SIM card inside from your phone company. So either way, the SIM card tray is being used. You're going to have to use the eSIM if you want to add a phone line, if you travel, if you want to have a second phone number, etc. So I disagree with this. I, if, there, if companies are going to keep doing this, then just go full eSIM and eliminate it. Then you're going to have more space on the phone for the things that you want. Stop being so comfortable to the phone companies. You gave them a chance to do it. They didn't do it. Well, you do it for them. So I agree with Apple on that one. The other thing that tech YouTubers are saying they this was a bad decision is because they it's harder for them to switch their phones now. Uh, they are switching one, uh, two months, they have the iPhone. The next two months, they have a Pixel. The next two months, they have a Z Fold. Then, then they have a Z Flip. You get the point. Uh, and this applies only to them. This doesn't even apply to me. And I do, I try to bring you videos regarding uh, tech, but I don't change phones because they don't send me review units or anything like that. And even if they did, what I would do is have a different phone number for it. I'm just trying it out. So I'm going to have a different phone number for it. I do call forwarding if I don't want to carry the two phones. Now most companies provide the call forwarding feature. I do the call forwarding and I'm done. I use a different, and then with the Android phones, I use the, the SIM card, which don't get too excited because most probably if Apple did it, give it about two years, Android phones are going to be eliminating the SIM card tray soon enough. They're going to do it. Just wait for it. Anyways, they change their phones every two months, three months. Most people don't. Most people keep their phones anywhere from three to five years. And it's better for the eSIM to be the standard since if your phone gets lost or stolen, as long as it's on and has battery power, you're going to know where your phone is which is better for the consumer. They are just giving their opinions as reviewers. Most consumers don't switch phones every two to three months. So I think that they need to get back a little bit to the roots of them giving you their opinions, obviously, because this is what we do. We just give opinions, but trying to give you the perspective of the consumer in some, in whatever you can, just give you a consumer perspective. Not try to give your own opinion regarding how bad this is for you, when if you just take two seconds, 
you go like, well, you know, I'm going to say this, but people don't switch their phones every two or three months like I do. Most people don't. And I mean from MKBHD to Rene Ritchie to uh, Max Tech to Telosiv Tech, all those people are saying, even Telosiv Tech, who calls himself the Apple Sheep, all those guys are saying that they disagree with the switch from the SIM card to the eSIM. And I honestly believe from a consumer perspective, consumer, not reviewer, this is the best decision Apple could have done. I couldn't agree more with Apple. This is well done uh, from their part. If you disagree with what I just said, leave it in the comments down below. But my humble opinion is that this was the right choice for Apple since they're anyway giving you their phone number or, or your phone number in the SIM card, then what's the point? And it's better for you to just pay the $50, $60, whatever it is, than having to pay the deductible if you lose your phone or it gets stolen, which normally goes to the hundreds of dollars. We'll probably keep increasing considering that the prices of phones is also increasing. Or maybe you don't even have to buy a new phone and start paying it from scratch. So all those things are important for you guys to keep in mind. It's better in a lot of ways. It is less better in some small ways. And I'm going to give you a little bit of a Star Trek geeky thing here. But the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few or the one. That's from Star Trek. I know I'm wearing a Star Wars t-shirt and it doesn't make any sense. But it's, it applies. That quote applies in this particular case. It is very important that I think YouTubers need to go back to giving you, giving you their opinion regarding a device, but from the consumer point of view, not from the reviewer point of view, which is what this actually feels like. As I said, if you disagree with this, or if you have any comments, go ahead and leave it in the comments down below. While you're down there, smash that like button, subscribe, and hit that bell so you can get notified when we have new videos. Remember, if you have a Google or Gmail account, you have a YouTube account. Sign in, subscribe, share this video, and that like button is very important, which you can only do if you're signed in on YouTube. And believe me, if you watch YouTube a lot and you're not signed in, and you actually like the videos, in order to press like, you need to be signed in, and that helps YouTube creators a lot. So it's really appreciated. As always, we're available on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and obviously YouTube. At Jerry Abrams Tech, so you can stay up to date with the latest news or rumors about tech. Until next time.